before we get started, man, tell everybody where they can find you on YouTube, dude. Man, the channel is Frank Lewis, the Y baby. And if you want to hear something different than everything else that's being talked about, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. What does the term YA baby mean to you? It's actually a term that was given to us by staff for uh, the, a name that they could use derogatory towards us that wasn't against the law. And that was to specifically talk about inmates that were in Fred C. Nellis. The Nellis kids were considered white babies, being that we were the youngest and most rowdiest in criminal behavior. I want to talk about Inglewood before we move on. Talk to me about Frank Anton Lewis. Um, I want your perspective on Inglewood. I want the good, the bad, and the ugly of Inglewood. And the first, let's start with the good. What was your favorite thing about growing up in Inglewood? Oh, that's easy. We weren't like South Central because I can't remember from the east side of South Central, 118th of San Pedro, where it was drugs, something you know, on the ground and trash ain't been taken out in months, to going to a city that was very beautified. Inglewood is a beautiful city, yeah. nice homes, beautiful trees, with a, a, a very little ghetto that could be considered a ghetto. But I like the, the diversity. You know, especially now, there's a whole lot more Caucasian to blend in with the Latino and Black that are still around. But as a child, it was the community, like, it all started as the Inglewood chain gang as far as gang stuff. And by the time I got to Inglewood, I was already entrenched in that behavior. So the first liking was the fact that all the bloods got along. It was the Inglewood chain gang that branched off Center Park, Crenshaw Mafia, and so forth. So... The unity, the blood unity, in, is the negative, and the environment upkeeping is the positive. And then if we go to the bad, the bad must come with, whenever you get something of too many, it always turns on each other. Mm. So the unity, the loyalty that we had in the 90s, that was good. Now it's bad because we, some sets are warm with each other certain individuals are at odds within this internal conflict like it's never been before. That's the bad. The ugly is gentrification and mothers that used to be able to afford to live there and feed their children at the same time Mm. could do so. Now with the price of rent going so high, there's people that are homeless. And with the Super Bowl that just passed, I'm talking about ugly, they removed the homeless encampment that was there. So that's ugly to, to remove something that's been a, a concrete foundation in this community for the last 40 to 50 years for some Super Bowl money. It ain't like they went and moved them all into Let's go take y'all to this new establishment that we had created for you. They left them for dry. Y'all go to Skid Row. They sent them to St. Julian, just making that population even worse. Mm. And that would be the ugly of Inglewood. You know, some of my favorite content of yours is your politics stuff, your political stuff. I see you're, you're heavy out there in the streets. And you've since moved away from Inglewood. You're now living yeah. in. Is it okay if I share where you're living now? Oh, most definitely. Okay, you're living in Las Vegas now. Um, and I see you, you know, I see you out there campaigning and, and just um, and rocking for certain politicians out there. When did you get into politics and why do you think more of us should pay attention to what's going on out there? Great question. It started in YTS. They started a program up there, a pilot program. Uh, to teach us about voting awareness. This was prior to the Schwarzenegger uh, campaign run for governor. So that like woke me up because at the time I was, anything that I could learn, I was trying to learn about that they let us. So that woke up a seed inside of me. Then realizing that laws were changed because of crimes that people my age did. They changed the law from 16 to 14 being able to try a juvenile as an adult in California behind some of our actions. But that was not possible without people voting for that. 
So that made me think like, wow, everything that is happening to us in this, as far as drug laws, programs in the community, women's rights, that's our mothers. That right there let me know if I wanted to play a role positively in the community, that voting would have to be something that I did. So that sparked knowledge. And then paroling, which was a, another obstacle for me that I found out comes directly from voting because we vote for the governor. The governor appoints the head or director of the Department of Correction. So everybody that's in jail from the wages that we get paid, from the phone call company that we can use to make the collect calls, all of that is dictated on the people that we put in position of power. So now we forward it here to Las Vegas, which one of the guys that we just went against in the, the primaries in June, June 14th, and he was out ousted and our Democrat was put in to replace him, he actually went out. And it can be verified through Google. I got one of these, I, I posted it on my YouTube channel, but this guy went and killed the investigative journalist that provided some of the information to us knowledgeable voters about his actions. So that should show us, because we so much like to see things in a gang perspective. And we get it from the politics, from the colors, from the the division, from the everything comes from a governmental structure. So wanting to be an attorney and going to be an attorney and my studies for that, I understand that we have the right to vote for judges. I have a child custody case pending. So it's important for me to have the judges that we need in these positions. And we don't even get that. And what's happening in California, what, what I want our California listeners to really hear is the district attorney race, which I don't know if it's over or not, but I think it's still coming to where y'all get to vote for y'all DA. That's the most important, di district attorney and attorney general. Those yeah. are the positions that really hold the people accountable. So if we got a district attorney that's against crimes, like the young African-American lady that I've seen speaking up on, well, bail needs to be ticking back. And we need to give, they're basically trying to take away these laws. If you look at the Roe versus Wade and that statue in, constitutional rights that women have is gone. That shows you if they woke up one day and said, hey, let's make slavery legal again. Uh, it's bannable. Uh, they have the power to amend. Isn't that scary, bro? Very much so. And the fact, what's more scary is that our people, still have it. what's more scary is our people just, they don't give a fuck. Like, we, they just, they're just, like, this is real, people. It, it, we're just... We're, we're more worried I, I don't about even think the not Yeah, I man. think they're brainwashed into this. If we really deeply look into the Willie Lynch theory, which they let us see. Right. You know, there's a secret society. Some call it, uh, what's that, Arma, uh, whatever these little Jay Z that was supposed to, Illuminati Not and all, all the little yeah, yeah. and all that. I don't know what name. I hate to put names on things because right. that gives unnegative, negative power to something that don't even deserve that. So it all starts with the vote. And if they know, like I was just, we, I went to a town hall and talked to a judge and asked him. And I know who this judge is. And he talked, it's about 70 black people in this church listening to this judge, Beneventure, say he's nobody, yet he's the chief judge. That's the head of all the municipal court judges. And he said, I'm nobody. But if you guys vote for me, I can become somebody. You're the head, though. So I went up to the front and asked him some questions. And afterwards, the guy that was running for DA he was fighting for said, I see you seen through that. And he explained to me. He says, that guy, Ben Adventure, knows 
who's going to vote for him because they've been doing it for the last 15 years. So he's not worried about who understands what he's saying because he knows nobody's going to turn out. That's power. Mm. If we don't understand it, Crips and Bloods, we don't got that. But as voters, having somebody that wants to be in a position, knowing that we hold your position in our hands, we can dictate what we need to change. 